the Mi A1, Xiaomi's first Android One device, the one that's supposed to get them to markets they've been unable to get to yet. Now, we've reviewed a lot of Xiaomi phones here on C4 eTech, and almost always we've, we see a lot of wishful thinking in the comments. What if this runs stock Android? And well, the A1 does. So is this dream team up what we've always wanted? Is the Mi A1 the phone to buy in this price segment? Well, let's find out. Hey guys, I'm Sundar, you're watching C4 eTech, and this is my full review of the Xiaomi Mi A1. And before we start, if you do end up liking this video and the effort that went behind it, don't forget to hit thumbs up, subscribe, and that bell icon. Let's get started. As always, let's begin with the build and design. Recently here on C4 eTech, Ash reviewed the Xiaomi Mi 5X, and the Mi A1 is basically the same hardware shell with stock Android running the show. So let's rewind back a bit and see what Ash had to say about the build in the Mi 5X review. The 5X shares quite a bit with the Mi Max 2. In fact, at times it feels like a shrunk down Mi Max 2. And that's not a bad thing. The design ain't anything we've not seen before. Kinda makes me go meh. But the ergonomics and in-hand feel are good. With that, let's dive into the physical overview. And like the Mi 6, we've got a 3.5mm headphone jack here, along with the Type-C port at the bottom flanked on either side by the primary microphone and speaker unit. The power button and volume rockers are located to the right, a secondary noise cancelling microphone and an IR blaster can be found up top. To the left, we have a tray. This tray can take two SIM cards or a SIM and a microSD card. To the front, on top, we've got a notification LED, sensors, a 5 megapixel selfie camera, and the earpiece. That's followed by a 5.5 inch display, and to the bottom, we've got the regular capacitive keys that are backlit. To the back, there's a dual tone, dual LED flash, and a dual camera setup. That is followed by a fingerprint scanner and the Xiaomi branding. It's a little bland for my taste, nevertheless, the build quality itself is excellent, and while single-handed usage might not be possible all the time, the Mi 5X does feel quite sturdy in hand. My feelings about the build and design are pretty much the same. I just have one thing to say. The Mi A1 uses a special coating to avoid fingerprints and smudges to the back, and it does it quite well. Considering the horrible time I had with the Honor 9i trying to wipe the smudges off all the time, this was a much needed feature for me. Xiaomi's done well with regards to the little things that matter as well. For starters, I'm impressed by the addition of the IR blaster. The basic sensors like gyroscope, accelerometer are all in place. NFC is missing though. In my time with the A1, the cellular reception and call quality were good. The loudspeaker on this guy deserves one's attention. It's probably the loudest you'll come across in this price segment. The quality was great. The audio output via the 3.5mm headphone jack was no different thanks to the inclusion of a dedicated amplifier. The audio is loud, crisp, and clear, better than some flagships out there. I faced no issues with the fingerprint scanner, it was both fast and accurate. The display here uses an IPS LCD panel with a full HD resolution, meaning a pixel density of about 400 pixels per inch. It's sharp and offers good viewing angles. The colors are decent, the contrast is above average, the blacks are quite deep for an LCD display. At 450 nits, it's not the brightest display I've seen, and the panel can get reflective, meaning you won't have the best experience using it outdoors. It's worth mentioning there's 2.5D Gorilla Glass for protection. Now that we are done with the exterior, let's look at what's underneath the hood. The Mi A1 comes in only one variant, with 4 gigs of RAM and 64 gigs of internal storage, and is powered by Qualcomm Snapdragon 625 chip. Now we've seen the 625 chip on numerous other devices including Xiaomi's own Mi Max 2 and Redmi Note 4. It's an excellent chip and it's better than ever here. The Mi A1 is probably the fastest phone with a 625 chip, thanks to stock Android. In our speed test comparison between the Mi A1 and the Mi 5X, basically stock Android versus Mi UI 9, the Mi A1 performed noticeably faster and managed memory better. The vanilla Android interface was extremely smooth and snappy. The Adreno 506 GPU helps with intensive gaming. There were the occasional stutters and frame drops, which don't really affect the experience. The gameplay was smooth for the most part. Now, like I said, you get to taste pure nougat on this phone. While it isn't as feature-rich as MIUI, there are some useful features that you'd find yourself using quite frequently, like double press power button to open camera, swipe down on the fingerprint scanner to open the notification panel, and so on. There are a few Xiaomi apps like Mi Community, Mi Store, and so on, but they are uninstallable. Another huge advantage stock Android has over MIUI is faster updates. Google's promised two major Android updates and regular security patch updates for the Mi A1. Hopefully they'll be able to stick to it. 
As of now, the A1 is on the October 2017 patch. Next, battery. The 3080 mAh unit held up quite well. The battery life was more or less similar to that of the Mi 5X. With moderate to heavy usage, the A1 managed to crawl through to the end of the day with about 10 to 20% juice left. My moderate to heavy usage includes playing around with the camera for some time, an hour or so of phone calls, video streaming, listening to music via the headphone jack, playing some light games from time to time, and other small tasks. To put things in perspective, with similar usage patterns, the Honor 9i had about 30-40% to charge left at the end of the day. Doesn't really matter, cause I ended up plugging it back in before going to bed anyway. The charging times were okay, given there's no support for quick charge. It easily took more than 2 hours to charge a flat battery to 100%. If you've been thinking stock Android is the only USB of this phone, well, you my friend are wrong. The Mi A1 is the first phone in this price segment to sport a telephoto lens, meaning you get enhanced portrait mode pictures like these from the 12 megapixel f2.6 secondary camera. They look great, better than what any other phone in this segment can get you. The edge detection and the background blur, they are almost as good as on portraits from some flagships. Outdoors under good lighting conditions, the 12 megapixel f2.2 primary camera performs really well. The detail level is exceptional. Look at this image. The texture of the wall here looks so crisp. Given the relatively narrow f2.2 aperture, the bokeh effect is not as strong as one would expect. The color reproduction though is above average. No oversaturation done here. The colors of those buildings are represented accurately. The dynamic range is great. You could see enough detail on both shadows and highlights. Even in extreme conditions like this, the dynamic range is decent. Look at these clouds. Indoors, the quality deteriorates to an extent. They are still very much usable. A lot of the detail is preserved. The images are decently exposed. The colors look natural too. The Mi A1's impressive camera performance continues even under low light. Yes, a lot more noise can be seen, but that's expected. The color reproduction is on point, be it the car on this image or the plants on this one. All's good with regards to selfies. The 5 megapixel selfie camera can shoot sharp selfies with good detail levels. Once again, the colors are quite natural. The Mi A1 can shoot 4K videos at 30 frames per second. Given the lack of OIS and EIS, the footage here looks jittery. But the quality itself is good. It's moderately sharp with natural colors. There is a reasonable amount of detail in both shadows and highlights. There's enough detail on the trees here and the sky. The clouds are not blown out. There's quite a bit of focus hunting and that might be a bummer. For an in-depth analysis of these cameras, here's a card to our dedicated camera review of the Mi 5X. Yes, the Mi 5X and the Mi A1 sport the same cameras, they even use the same camera apps, meaning the processing is the same. Anyway, my one-line verdict, these are extremely good cameras for the price, even better than the ones on the Moto G5 S Plus. Here's a card to a comparison between both phones, check it out. With everything done and dusted, let's get to a question you probably already have an answer to. Should you buy this phone? Well, the Mi A1 cost 15,000 rupees here in India. It will be available in the European markets for 229 euros from November 11, and other markets globally for approximately 230 dollars. Now, if you've been watching our chances, you'd be aware that we've already been recommending this phone to you guys. Good build quality, best in segment cameras, excellent audio, two promised future Android version updates. What more can you ask for? The 5.2 inch variant of the Zenfone 3 costs about 12,500 rupees. It's got an amazing design and a much better camera. Single camera, but it's much better than the one on the A1. Unless you prioritize these two over a better software experience, the ability to shoot portrait mode pictures, a larger display, and faster updates, you should go with the Mi A1. So that's what I feel about the A1. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. And while you're there, give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe to C4E Tech for more like this. Do this to make sure you get notified each time we upload a new video. Thanks a lot for watching. This here is Sundar from C4E Tech, leaving for the moment. Have a great day.